This happened when I went on a road trip with my girlfriend. We took the back roads because I was driving and I always prefer a little more scenery to the highways. When we were passing through one of these country lanes, I noticed something. There was a slots place, you know, like for gambling, etc. Well, back then I was really into slots and I just had to insist that we pull over and take a look. I was intrigued by the place because they seemed to be promoting an out-of-date game which I had been dying to play. I could tell already that the place was really dated. I managed to get the authorization from my girlfriend and I turned into the car park. She wanted to give it a shot too, but she was feeling tired, and anyway, she's not that much of a fan of the slots. I knew she wanted to take a nap in the car, and that was fine with me, so I left her in the car, and I headed in. I think about an hour or so passed, and I was up. I had won quite a lot, and I was really happy. I expected to gamble for longer, and I was tempted to continue, but I thought that I should probably quit while I was ahead. I went back to the car, and I could instantly tell that there was something wrong with my girlfriend. She was trying to open the door, and her eyes were locked with mine. Something's happened, I thought to myself. Oh god, oh thank god it's the real you this time, I was so scared. I asked her what happened, and she told me that she had been sleeping in the passenger seat with the seat folded backwards. She then said that she saw me approach from the front of the car, and look at her through the windscreen. She was half dozing off at this point, and she thought to herself, Oh, whoa, he's back early. Then the person who she thought was me gestured to her to open the driver's side door. And she thought to herself, Why are you trying to get me to open the door when you're the one with the keys? I took the keys with me after I locked her in the car. The person staring at her who looked like me didn't say a word. He just kept pointing at the driver's seat. My girlfriend then pretended to be asleep as she had a bad feeling about what was going on. She said something inside herself told her not to open that door. Apparently the thing that looked just like me was just grinning at her and standing stationary. She went on attempting to ignore him slash me. She couldn't really go anywhere, so pretending to be asleep was likely her only option. A few moments passed and she was suddenly shocked by the sound of a thunderous banging sound against the glass. The me thing was now banging on the window, still grinning and still gesturing for her to open the door. She said that she couldn't stand the way I was staring at her with my eyes as wide as my grin. She said it wasn't like me at all yet, it looked just like me. She couldn't take it anymore and she said she guessed that she fainted. She came to when she saw me approaching the car, and once again she thought it was the doppelganger mimic thing, until she saw me put my key in the driver's side door lock. This incident really shook her up, and after this, I decided that I wouldn't leave her in the car alone anymore. I have experienced paranormal things since I was a child. I have always been open and receptive to paranormal things, and possibly to a fault. When I started dating my now husband, I would tell him all sorts of stories of things that I experienced through my childhood and teenage years. He has always been fascinated by the paranormal, and my stories always intrigued him, but he never experienced anything himself until we moved in together. I've always been convinced that I had a clinger spirit that had attached itself to me somewhere in life and just stayed along for the ride. We've lived in different locations and always experienced the same things at each home. It was never anything malicious and I always joked that my Casper was just doing things to say hi and let me know he's there. My husband just laughed it off because there was never a real issue and everything seemed harmless and playful. We have walked into our offices with our desk chairs spinning when no one was in the room. We have smart TVs and they all rotate turning on in the middle of the night as if someone is trying to watch TV. 
scrolling through the apps to select Netflix or Hulu. I've also seen it just run through the different HDMI options. Items that have specific locations, like keys, will end up in random places, like under the kitchen sink or in a sock drawer. We shut our closet doors at night, and we will wake up with them wide open. I can't sleep if there's even a sliver of light showing in my room, and any light will wake me from a dead sleep. I wake up to the bathroom light switching on quite often, which requires me to get out of bed and turn it off so I can get back to sleep. My husband's computer powers on by itself, and it's a big tower with a power button that takes a little effort to push. We've become used to these things, but lately, something else has started, and I think it's mimicking me. Lately, when I'm downstairs and my husband is in his office upstairs, he will walk to the landing of our stairwell and ask me if I call his name. Usually, if I need something or have a question for him, I will just call his cell if I'm too lazy to run upstairs or if I'm in the middle of cooking and can't leave the stove. Even when I'm laying down in bed and he's on his computer in the same room, he will pull off his headphones and ask me what I need. For a while, I was thinking, am I losing my mind? Am I actually saying something and not realizing it? He has stopped gaming midstream to come find me, aggravated that I am calling him, when I literally haven't said a word. Every time I tell him that I didn't say his name, he gets this confused look, like he's trying to read my face to see if I'm telling the truth. Yesterday was the turning point. I was laying in bed reading, and he threw a bottle of water on the bed next to me. I asked him why he brought me a bottle of water, and he said, Do you not remember asking me for water? I told him no, and pointed to a bottle of water on the nightstand that I brought to bed when I laid down. He said, you literally just yelled down for me to bring you a cold bottle of water. I explained to him that I did not say that, because I had my own cold water that I brought to bed. We both agreed that something really strange is happening because this has just started within the last month, and I don't know if this is my entity that has followed me just now becoming vocal, or if this is something new. We're both of sound mind, and neither of us have any sort of mental issue that we're aware of that would have me speaking without knowing it, or him hearing things. Aside from extreme annoyance, is there a real cause for concern? There's a guy in my neighborhood, they say it looks just like me, and it's getting weirder and weirder by each passing day. Colleagues, friends, even my wife and kids have said there is someone in our area who is my literal double. My wife even said, I've been living with you for 20 years and even I thought that it was you. That's pretty creepy to be honest. Even my boss, who lives the other side of town, has apparently seen this guy roaming around. It seems like everyone in my personal little world has come in contact with this guy, even though he seems so prevalent in my world. I've never met him. I wondered who the hell this doppelganger was and how he could look so much like me that he was able to deceive my wife and children. Also as a side point, according to one of my kids, this guy has a wife and his own children too. Now, I didn't believe my kid at first, but then, at work, one of my close friends said that there were rumors floating around that I was having an affair. This was all likely down to the multiple sightings of this doppelganger and his family. It was becoming awkward and embarrassing at this point, not to mention stressful. Last weekend, my parents came to visit, and as soon as I greeted my father at the doorstep, he said to me, Hey, how'd you get here so fast? We just saw you go into the convenience store up the street there. I couldn't believe it. How the hell was my parents unable to see the difference between me and this guy who looked like me? What was worse was the fact that my dad asked to have a talk with me. He then proceeded to grill me and ask me tons of questions, trying to find out if I was having an affair, despite being shocked to see me in two places at once. He didn't really believe me at first, and I felt comfortable and confident enough 
to bring it up in front of my family. My wife backed me up and told my parents that she mistook the doppelganger for me as well. It seems like I have to go through hurdles to make people believe that I am the real me these days. This has been going on now for about a year and I don't know when it will end. I'm considering moving away. Even though the doppelganger and I have never met, I can honestly say that his presence has affected my life negatively. I just don't know what to do. Hi, it's Jay here. There were additional comments added by other users which I felt were worth sharing here. Some say when two doppelgangers meet, they die. This happened to me once. I was on a business trip in Sapporo, but a colleague of mine was certain that they saw me in Tokyo. At the time I thought, wow, you must really enjoy creating your own little fiction. But when I hear stuff like this, I can't help but wonder. I mean, appearance is one thing. But I was told the guy who looked like me even had my voice and mannerisms. It happened to me too, when I was younger. My sister thought she saw me at a train station. She says that the version of me was browsing a shop there. She was certain that it was me, but something put her off from going over. I had seen her that morning and she helped me pick out my outfit and said that the person at the station was wearing different socks. To be honest with you, I was annoyed. I mean, if there is a doppelganger out there of me, I would love to hear that my sister went and spoke to it. She asked me if I was at that station later that night, and it's one I've never been to. Weird. Maybe I should go there. So, I, male, thirties, haven't had a paranormal experience of any kind until this past weekend. I was staying in the guest room of my father's house, which has quilts from each of my ancestors hanging on the walls. My father's house is new, brand new in fact. They moved in this April after the house burned down on Christmas Eve of 2019. They'd only been living in the house a couple of months before the exterior fireplace connected the house lit the roof on fire. The house is enormous. The room I'm staying in shares the wall with the bathroom on the west and the room with a full bar to the north. That room connects with the living room slash kitchen to the north, which is huge. I'd say the distance between the guest bedroom and the living room is about as long as a bus. So they're a bit of a distance away. I'm sitting in bed passively playing Animal Crossing just after midnight, maybe 12.30, when I hear my dad talking on the phone. He's absolutely a workaholic, so for a second I didn't think much of it. But he retired a few months ago, and doesn't stay up late at all anymore. The conversation sounded pretty tense, and I couldn't quite hear all that was being discussed. But my dad sounded very matter-of-fact. From what little I picked up, he was aggressively trying to explain his reasoning for disliking some guy. I got closer to the door to hear better, not wanting to open it and disturb him, but the sound didn't get any louder. I decided to open the door and when I did, the voice disappeared. I like white noise to sleep, but my dad hates it so he keeps his house dead quiet. I walked into the living room trying to hear whatever might be going on, but it remained silent. I shook it off and decided to use the bathroom right before bed. I sat down on the toilet, phone in hand, and proceeded to drop the kids off at the pool. Then, I heard my sister's voice, closer than my father's voice was, and clearer as well. My sister is very much into the paranormal, and is very convinced that paranormal things are happening to her. She certainly has treated a Ouija board as a toy for many years and always desired have a ghostly encounter so I'm not sure if she provoked something or not. I remain skeptical but am reevaluating those feelings now. She recently had a baby and was staying the night at dad's because the baby was sick. I still couldn't phrase what was being said but I could tell she was telling a story. The only clear thing I heard was he is killed and he will kill again. 
and that was more than enough for me to pinch it off, wash my hands and run to bed as fast as I could. I put in headphones and stayed up for another hour and a half watching Animaniacs until I was tired enough to sleep. When I turned off the phone, I took out my headphones. I could hear my dad's voice again. It sounded like it came from the bed I was in, and it said, Hey bud. Just like my dad does. Only, there was no one there. I think I encountered a mimic, though I'm not entirely sure. I'm curious what you all think. This is a very weird and frightening experience which happened to me when I went to stay with my parents. I had been at university, and it was a nice chance to take a break from hitting the books. That night I had dinner with mum and dad, and I took a long relaxing soak in the bath, and I headed back to my childhood bedroom to get some sleep. But for some reason that night, I couldn't sleep. I decided to get out of bed and grab my laptop. I figured I could read some stories on 2chan until I felt sleepy. I got back into my bed with my laptop. My parents had already gone to bed, so the house was pretty much silent. I think that it's always this way at my house at around midnight. We live out in the countryside too, so it's always quiet. The only noises would be that of the various household appliances or the bugs outside. I was reading in silence until about 2 a.m., when suddenly my concentration was broken by a noise. It was the sound of laughter. It sounded as if it came from just outside my bedroom door. A chill raced down my spine, and I froze in place with my eyes locked on the bedroom door. Unknown laughter in the dead of night is terrifying enough, but there was something much more frightening about that laugh, because that laughter was my own. I was so scared by this phenomenon, I reverted back to my childhood state. I crawled beneath my blankets and cowered there. I just kept thinking, that's my voice, again and again. However, enough time had passed for me to consider that since I hadn't heard the laughter, my laughter, for what felt like hours, perhaps I could sleep. Perhaps whatever was out there was gone. While I was mulling this over, I guess I fell asleep. In the morning, I asked my sister, who was sleeping in the room next to mine, if she heard the laughter in the hallway but she said she didn't hear anything. I wonder what the hell that was. Was it my doppelganger or a mimic or something? Have you ever heard of a helpful doppelganger or mimic? Apparently I have one. I've never seen him myself, but I'm told that he is out there. It is weird, but he's a decent person. I mean that in the sense that he isn't doing anything negatively to affect my life. This guy just seemingly goes out of his way to help others. Let me give you some examples. This guy helped an old woman who became disorientated due to the summer heat. He took her home and made sure she was safe and hydrated. Another time he helped out a courier, like a package delivery guy, who had broken down. That's really good if true because these guys have really strict time limits in which they are forced to operate in. He did the same for a car stuck in the snow. Yeah, apparently he got behind the car and gave it a good push to get it going. Another good move. He also gave aid to an old man who pulled a muscle whilst harvesting his vegetables in a field. So every time something like this happens, I'm constantly praised for something I have no recollection of doing. Seriously, I've had people come up to me, at my work, giving thanks for something I haven't helped with, and sometimes they even bring gifts. I think the reason this happens is down to the way I drive a sales car, and our company likes to slap our images right there on the company vehicles. It's unmissable, to be honest. I guess everyone in my town knows my face. Now, I'm not someone who would like to take the praise for others' good deeds, 
So, every time this happens to me, I stay as transparent as possible. And I say that it wasn't me. It's kind of like stolen valor, but on a much more minute scale. And when I tell them categorically that it was not me, I get told stuff like this. Ah, it was you. Couldn't have been anybody else. I mean, I'm stuck with the following question. What the hell? I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I do feel kind of guilty. Hi, Jay here again. Here are some more interesting responses to this thread that I felt would be good to include. Well, I have heard of doppels affecting people's lives negatively, but not positively. Maybe it's your guardian spirit. Your ancestors are maybe setting an example. Hey, it's always nice to help others. Plus, it makes you look good. I can't see an issue. Get your doppel to do your shopping. Get some champagne or something. In my teens, when I lived with my parents, we would all hear a mimic off and on for years. Even my older sister said she experienced it before she moved out. I'd be playing video games with my door closed, and on more than one occasion, I've heard my mum call my name from down the hall. I would immediately pause the game and crack my door open, and my mum wouldn't be standing there. I'd search through the house, and of course she'd be sound asleep in her room, as she stopped in to say goodnight hours ago. After a while I got used to that trick, so the next time I heard what I thought was my mum's voice, I'd ignore it and wait. If it really was her, I could tell if she entered the hallway by watching the light from the crack under the door from my bed, because real mum would make her way to my room. If I didn't see those shadows, I knew it wasn't her. Only a handful of times have I heard any one of my other family members' voices while I was the only one home. When I was like 10, I rode the bus home from school and would often beat my parents home. I'd set up in the front room and do my homework while I waited for them to get back home. Nokia bricks were a thing, so I'd give them a call and say I made it home. I would get focused on my homework or daydreaming or whatever, and I'd hear my mum or dad call out that they were home from the same hallway by my bedroom. There was a door to the laundry room and garage halfway down the hall. Only the problem was that I did not hear a loud garage door or garage entry door open or shut. Just a sudden spontaneous voice out of nowhere. My dog would hear the voice too. It would bark and then show visible confusion and then growl. My mum would also regularly pop into my room or wherever I was and ask if I called her or if I said something. The answer was mostly no. She would also pop in with an answer to an irrelevant question a mimic apparently asked on my behalf. On occasion I'd catch mum respond to a mimic's voice that I did not hear. Even I'd do the same. Mum would also tell me she heard my voice and my dad's voice when she was getting ready for bed or deep into the night. On another occasion, we both heard my sister interject in a conversation of ours from the other room. We were having some conversation about a TV series we liked in the kitchen. Then both of us heard my sister's voice say, Hello, I'm here. Clear as day from the other room. This is years after my sister moved out. She still had a key for emergencies, but one look around the corner told us she didn't use it that day. Kind of amazing that we both heard that, and the mimic must have been holding onto my sister's 16-year-old voice for years. The most disturbing aspect of the mimic was that I felt it could distort or alter our speech in real time, as if it was speaking through a curtain that was between us. My mum and I are having a conversation about the groceries. Mum would ask what I wanted. I'd tell her some stuff that I was craving. She responds with some ingredient that'd be good, and I heard her say, Oh, how about you get lost? Which was completely out of context and the words I heard didn't even match how her mouth moved. I asked, what? And she repeated. I said, oh, how about some fresh basil? 
If you made it this far, thanks for the listen. It feels good to share these little experiences. I want to share with you a weird and scary experience which happened to me when I was in secondary school. In my city, there's a Catholic girls' university. It's pretty well known locally. In fact, my mother went there. In fact, my mother went to that university as a student, and at the time this experience went down, she was a lecturer there. Like I say, when I was in secondary school, I often went to university when my mum was working. I didn't like to go there when the students were there though. One day I headed to the university after school to meet my mum. I was wearing my school uniform at the time, and I remember feeling nervous about my appearance in such an adult world. It turned out that there were no classes that day, and the only people who appeared to be on site were the lecturers and a few sisters. There were no students in sight, and I was glad. The campus wasn't all that big, but when there weren't many people on site, it felt like a ghost town. It felt very quiet. My mum had a meeting that day, and I had to wait for her while she went off to the conference room. I don't really like walking around campus, so I would usually head to the library. I like to look at the books, and I don't dislike being alone. But that day, since I knew all the students weren't there, I decided to explore the campus a little. I was strolling around campus, inside and out. I had no real plan in mind. I stepped outside one of the buildings, the main building. The main building is a glass building, which reflected the natural scenery surrounding it like a mirror. It's a very long building. I was passing along the right-hand side of this building, watching my own reflection. At the time, I was amusing myself. I watched myself in the reflection running back and forth. I was enjoying it until I noticed that there was a person behind me. The person was dressed exactly the same way I was. I thought for a second that there might be another secondary school student here with me, so I spun around. However, when I turned around to greet them, I realized that there was no one there. My eyes had deceived me. I thought to myself, well, this is strange, as I looked back at the glass building and I saw someone there behind me in the reflection. I started to panic because this person, who seemed to be the same as me, was only visible in the reflection of the glass. I had never seen anything like that before. I looked at the secondary school student, trying to figure out what kind of optical illusion this was. I couldn't explain it, so curiosity blossomed into fear. Then things got worse. I saw the person who only seemed to exist in the reflection of the dark glass building begin to run towards me. I was terrified. I looked away from the glass building and there was still no one behind me in reality. When I looked back at the glass, the secondary school student was getting closer and closer. I was so confused and struck with an inability to move. What do I do? I remember thinking. As the student drew closer, I could make out more distinguishing facial features, and with a sharp shock, I realized that it was me. I was looking at myself in the reflection. I could see two versions of myself. One was the real me stood stock still in terror, and the other was some hate-filled, angry version of myself which was running at such a speed, it seemed as if it would collide against the real me. I saw all the features of my own face contort into a twisted grin. At the moment of perceived collision, I couldn't do much but shut my eyes and brace for the pain. But I didn't feel a thing. I opened my eyes to see the version of me race past me and run further on. It all happened in a matter of seconds, but it scared the hell out of me. I ran back to find my mother. The air seemed stale outside. When I found her, I told her everything, and of course, she didn't believe me. I tried to tell the sisters at the university, but they were even more dismissive than my mother. This happened about five years ago, 
and I haven't had any issues. Some say that if you see your doppelganger, you might get into an accident, or even die, but so far, my health is in a good place. I don't care what people say, I stand by my experience. I know it wasn't a daydream or some kind of mistake. It really happened, and after seeing it, it made me believe more in the paranormal and the occult. There really are strange and frightening things out there in our world, and I think I've seen one of them. And it looked just like me. Since around 2014, I've had periodic experiences with something that I've taken to calling the bathroom ghost. A vast number of these experiences have happened in or around the bathrooms of places I lived or stayed at for some odd reason. The first encounter in what I think was 2014 was at a friend's house where I often spent the night. I was in my sophomore or junior year of high school at the time. I always got a lot of strange feelings in that house. The air felt heavy and wrong in a way that I couldn't quite explain or articulate. And certain rooms I just couldn't be in because they would make me feel anxious for some reason. Anyway, one of these days I was staying over, I heard something strange that scared me half to death while I was in the bathroom. To the left of me was the door, to the right was the bathtub. On my right side, I heard a voice whisper, Hey! Clear as day. Not far from my ear. It made me jump out of my skin and I recognized that it sounded exactly like my friend's voice. Now, the speed with which I convinced myself it must have somehow just been the shower curtains shifting was honestly remarkable. But just as soon as I calmed myself down, it did it again. Hey! In that whispered tone in my friend's voice. Needless to say, I got out of that room as fast as possible. Now, I want to clarify that there was no way this could have actually been my friend. Reasons being that A. The voice came from the side of the room opposite the door and there was no nearby room through which he could have spoken through the wall or something. Also, the voice wasn't muffled in any way. B. I could clearly hear my friend talking loudly to his mum in the living room, which was at least 30 feet from the bathroom door. Now, I only experienced this once in that house, but here's why I think that whatever this thing was, it's followed me. In my first apartment with my friends, there was one notable circumstance of something happening in the bathroom. Now, this may not have been the same thing. It wasn't a voice which mimicked one of my friends. This was at least three to four years after the first experience, but myself and my two roommates were all sat in the living room watching movies when we suddenly heard an odd sound from the bathroom. The hairdryer had turned itself on. It had been plugged in, so maybe it was just a spooky coincidence, but there hadn't been any sort of power surge to have triggered it, and we were all pretty spooked. The most recent experience, which truly makes me believe that this thing has followed me, happened just last year, not too long after moving into my current apartment. Once again, I was in the bathroom, and I heard a voice come from the door. Clear as day, I heard my fiancé's voice say, Hello? Reasonably, I had assumed that they came to the door to talk to me, which we do with some frequency, so I responded back, Hello? I didn't get any further response, so I started to get a bit nervous. My fiancé had been in the bed when I went to the bathroom, and the bedroom's just next door. But we have long since learned that we can't hear each other if one of us yells from the bed towards the bathroom, hence why we sometimes stand outside the door to talk. I got out and, a bit nervous, asked if they had been trying to speak to me through the door. They were lying down where I left them when I came into the room, and they very casually told me that no, 
they hadn't. Fully shaken now, I told them what I had heard, and they were a little amused, like, ah, the bathroom ghost strikes again, which I did also find funny. They weren't making fun of me for being a little freaked out by any means. My fiancé is not the type of person who tries to scare other people by messing with them, so I know they weren't just playing a joke on me and acting like they had no idea what I meant. Does anybody know what sort of thing this might be? Is it in my head? What kind of thing copies people's voices? I saw a doppelganger for the first time in my life. I work far away from the town I grew up in, and I live alone. It's my first time living alone, and I've had to take my time to adjust to it, because I still do get bouts of homesickness. I live very far away, and I think that the distance makes it worse. I rarely see my family. Within the first few months, homesickness really set in for me. Then something unusual happened. I had the strangest feeling that there was someone in my home with me whenever I got home. I don't know how I could possibly explain the first inclinations of someone being in the home with me. It was like a hint or a sign, but nothing concrete. I guess for the situation I'm trying to describe, I would be better off saying that I felt a presence rather than a person. But it shifted. It became something more than just hints and signs. It became auditory. I began to hear light footsteps, then soft sighs. I, perhaps, like you at this stage in my experience, thought that I was just homesick. I longed for the sounds of a house full of life and day-to-day -day noise. Of course, I really missed home, but the sounds I was hearing weren't the sounds of home. They were the sounds of something entirely different. I heard the noise of a young woman. I could tell by the size. It felt as if I had a roommate that I couldn't see. I was very aware that I wasn't alone in my home. I believed that there was someone here with me. I even began to understand the rhythm of their life. For example, when I left for work, I would often hear the bathroom door close and the light turn on. And I know, I sound kind of crazy, but I've experienced so many things in my apartment which I can relate back to the noises I heard. For example, the sound of the bathroom door opening and finding it open when I went to check. Also the sound of the kettle being turned on and gently moved. It always felt as if it was left in a different place than the place I left it in. Yet, I still kept my skepticisms. I still doubted what was going on. I decided that if it was nothing but a forgetful mind and auditory hallucinations, then perhaps a trip back home and resetting my mind might be in order. When I met up with my parents again, I bared all and told them about my experiences. And to my surprise, my mother told me something I didn't know about myself. I'm not surprised that things are moving around and doors are left open. I mean, you did sleepwalk as a child. Both mum and dad smiled at my realization. I had no idea I sleepwalked. I had no memory or awareness of it. Well, that's because people who sleepwalk don't tend to remember it. I mean, I guess that sleepwalking was a more favorable outcome than a ghost or a home invader. So I accepted that theory for a while. But it was only when I returned back to my apartment that I was reminded of the occasional feminine sign that I had heard. I grew so used to the noises, I gave a name to the person who I thought was making them. Another girl. I'm a female, you see, so it felt as if there was another girl living here with me. Life with another girl went on with no problems. I started to have dreams though, and that was right around the time that things went bad for me. 
I dreamed that when I got home, the position of my shoes at the door had changed. I put this down to another girl living in my home. It went on like that for a while, and then I met another girl. I was leaving for work. It was early morning and I was pretty sleep deprived. There she was, stood right before me. My eyes caught hers, and she looked as exhausted as I felt. For some reason we nodded at one another and walked past each other. She walked right into my home and shut the door as if there was nothing unusual about that. I didn't know what to do other than walk away. I just carried on with my morning routine. I was so scared on the train that I threw up. The reason for this was because that person, the person who had no difficulties walking into my home, had the same face as me. I was convinced that I could have been looking into a mirror when I saw her. I felt physically sick for the rest of the day. I'm always exhausted from working overtime. I don't usually like to go out after work for drinks, and I often get invited by my colleagues, but that night, I just felt like going. I wasn't ready to go home. I think I must not have looked that good that night. I must have had terrible bags under my eyes, and said eyes must have been looking off into space, contemplating what might be potentially waiting for me at home. Either way, I stayed out until the last train home, which was about 6 a.m. It was so unlike me. When I got home, I realized that the person who looked so much like me from the day before might have been my future self. There was no one there when I got home, no one but me. I noticed in the morning that some of my stuff had been scattered around the room. Well, I guess that isn't that paranormal after a night out. The rent wasn't cheap, and the building wasn't old, so I didn't think that I had a home with a history or anything like that. I mean, I didn't hear any rumors about my building either. Ordinary people lived here. We've not that out of the ordinary lives. That's me included in that statement. Rather than thinking that I was being haunted by myself somehow, the only way I've been able to come to terms with my situation is by thinking that I'm living in some kind of time slip. I somehow tapped into a different time and space. I heard that when you meet a doppelganger of yourself, your days are numbered. I'm still kind of worried, to be honest, which is why I'm here. I'm here because she is still here. Another girl is still here. I can still sense her in my apartment. If she leaves, then maybe I'll die. And I'm homesick again, and I really want to go back and see my parents. I just want to get rid of everything, you know? My work, this apartment, another girl. I just want it all to go away. I just want to say a huge thank you to Papa Scare for joining me on this one. Please do go check out his channel if you haven't already. He uploads some fantastic stuff there, and you might even find a few collabs with me, Jimmy, apparently. Please like, share, subscribe, and join me for the next video. I'll see you soon.